What's going on, everybody? So today I got a really good video for you guys. Normally I don't endorse or uh, you know try to push any any products, but this one is just too good not to. I've known about CTC tools for a few years now. Um, had the pleasure of uh, dealing a lot with Brian Lewandowski over there when I was uh, at ATG for a while. And some of these tools are just really impressive. Uh, I don't know if a lot of you have had a chance to deal with them or actually work with them. But here I'm going to show you how we can actually grade. Uh, I'm just going to do this side right here. But we're going to grade these residential lots here in a couple of minutes. And it's not, it's not even going to be that hard. Um, the typical workflow for me whenever it comes to lot grading, um, depending if I'm in precise or rough grading, you know, I want to grade out these lot lines, uh, make sure that there's flow there, and then I'm going to have to put these pads in. And, you know, when you're talking about a subdivision that is this big, um, I mean, any iterative changes that happen, there's just a ton of stuff that you have to update, right? Um, it's very hard to keep it dynamic. Typically, the way we do grading where I'm at in Texas, um, you know, we have our five foot yard setbacks. These are 50 foot wide lots. So I'm looking at about a 40 foot wide pad. Uh, typically, they go back to 25 feet uh, and then you have 25 feet in the front for your parkway. Um, so we're looking at you know, 70 feet and then 25 and 25. Um, and we just want to fit a pad there that's going to be flat some sometimes we they allow us to grade them but for the most part they're going to be flat so again here's 17 lots this isn't going to be uh, too hard so the tool we're going to use is called auto grader um, so the first thing i want to do before we get into that is i'm going to come here off to the side i'm going to go ahead and create a feature line and this feature line, I'm going to go ahead and give it a name. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and start here. We could do a zero elevation. And again, we said we were going to go down 70. This thing's going to be flat, so we'll do zero. Um, and then we're going to go 40 feet wide. Again, zero. Up 70, zero. And then let's just close it off. So this is going to be our pad. And we're going to want to place this guy all along here pretty quickly. So I'm gonna go up to the Sim Project Suite. I go over to AutoGrader. And we can see there's nothing in here. So I haven't, you know, gone ahead and done this before. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the green plus button. And what we're gonna use is a tool called template insertion. It's a little bit of a weird name, but when I click on it, we can see that there's a bunch of pads showing up along an alignment. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK, and we're going to see that we're going to need a feature line. Um, we can even do stations. We can do where feature lines intersect other feature lines. So now that I know that I need that, let's go ahead and close this guy, and we're going to come to the corridor. And we're just going to go ahead and extract this P2 feature out here. And make sure that it stays dynamic, right, because we want that to update um, as stuff changes, we're going to go ahead and give that a name. And let's go ahead and put this style, go ahead, corridor dynamic. So let's go ahead and extract this feature line. You see, there it is. Going back into AutoGrader, let's go ahead and finish this guy up. I'm going to select it. I go ahead and edit this. And we're going to call this uh, pad grading left. And we're going to go ahead and select our feature line. Now I could do it if there was a bunch of these I was doing on the left side. I can go ahead and just query my current drawing, make sure that all the left ones are on the same layer. And I can actually mass grade this entire subdivision pretty, pretty easily. In this case, I'm just going to select our one feature line here. And one thing to keep in mind as we select that feature line is, it's going to be going in the same direction as our corridor. So our corridor is actually heading uh, southwest to northeast. So that's the station that this 
feature line is also going in. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it um, we don't have any other features, feature lines to intersect with. So I'm going to go ahead and do this off of stationing. And so here it's going to ask us where we want to start the stationing. And I'm going to go ahead and select. Uh, actually, we're we're heading the the grade of this street is actually going northeast southwest. So we're going to want to place these pads on the high side at 2% from the right of way, wherever that five feet is, set that pad off of that. So now I'm gonna go ahead and select that station, but we know that we need to subtract five from it. So we're gonna go ahead and do 65. And our interval is actually going to be 50. So let's we'll go ahead and hit plus. We don't need this first one because that's not at a good station. And now let's go ahead and tell it what we want to do. So I'm going to hit this green plus button here. And let's go ahead and call this our pad. And we'll go ahead and select our object, which is this feature line. And then the base point, where we want to insert it. So if we're going to be on the left side, right? So if my cursor is the center line, we're going to be to the north. So we're going to want to insert this guy at this corner, right? Because the direction that we're going is from what east to west. So we're going to want to place this on the high side, which is there. Let's go ahead and leave our rotation at zero. And we're going to go ahead and do a distance and a slope. Um, the side we're going to be on is the left side. And let's go ahead and do 25 feet. And let's do it going up at 2%. And you can see right here, as I put this in, it's telling me it's going to create 17 of those features for us. So I'm going to go ahead and save and close this. And I'm going to go ahead and close this guy. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom back over here. And now I'm going to go ahead and open AutoGrader again. And I'm just going to say run. And when I hit run, you'll see in the background, it's placing all of those pads for me. And we can go ahead and check these, right? So next we, we're going to want a surface, right, to check what this grade is. So I'm going to go ahead and select my corridor, create a corridor surface, and we will go ahead and do uh, one and five and do top. Yes, let's rebuild. So there's our surface. And I don't know if you saw, but in AutoGrader, so I can actually select these and add them manually, but we can also just tell AutoGrader, go ahead and add these when you create them. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit run. So that's saving me a few steps there. And it's going through, putting them back in. And there we go. So I'm going to close this guy now. And I'm going to go ahead and do a split view so we can actually see uh, the surface. So over here, let's go ahead and um, let's do this. And let's uh, go ahead and rotate this guy around. And then we're going to want to turn off this existing surface. And let's go ahead and set this display to conceptual. 